Good morning from the Rosalind Observatory. The dogs needed to go out. The sky is clear. Uh, what else to do but to put sea star outside and uh, get back on uh, Mercurian's chain. In all likelihood, we're going to have to focus. I can see some very fat stars. As soon as it's done taking its darks. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it and autofocus. This is a new one, autofocus having failed. It's most likely struggling with all the galaxies in there. Okay, this is good focus. This looks good enough for now. Okay. Good morning from the Russia and we had a disaster yesterday. But I learned something new. We were outside in Grimshaw Elementary School with a whole bunch of kids and parents showing them what Sea Star can do. And uh, my laptop declared critical failure and shut down. I did not realize, but apparently it has a thermal switch. When it gets too cold, it says good night. So we still had our star party because uh, she started very well. We had uh, four, let's see, one, two, three, four, five telescopes there was one hyperstar 
f2 uh, SLS on 9 and a quarter inch. There was one 11 inch looking at uh, Jupiter. There was uh, and Saturn and the moon. There was one looking at the moon dedicated. All in all, it was good outreach event to excite the kids about uh, astronomy. I was very surprised that none of the children, but more so none of the parents, had any appreciation for electronic assisted astronomy. One mom came uh, directly to the sea star to look through the lens, thinking this is where you look through. And uh, they thought that the tablet was displaying a picture on the internet. So I had to show them how it's loose to the moon, how it stacks. But uh, most of those 10 year olds had the patience of a 10 year old. Uh, one funny incident is a, a mom pulled in with a, in a big SUV with five children, a dog, and a soccer ball. And they all got out in the field and they started running around and kicking the ball. And here are the <laughs> very expensive telescope setups with their owners. Uh, not so much freaking out, but uh, I had a table uh, protecting the sea star. I put it on a high six foot tripod so people don't trip on the telescope itself. But all in all, it was a, a clear night. I did take some pictures of the moon and other things. But uh, I'm going to need to do some research. The president of the Syracuse Astronomical Society said that he searched up and down wide until he found a Panasonic tough book where he could turn off the thermal switch so he can use it in the cold nights of upstate New York. updating the picture on the YouTube stream and uh, selecting playlist and there is one starlink 
Yeah, so they was very excited to try to capture the International Space Station with the Sea Star. I did due diligence in finding that it passed within uh, 15 minutes, arc minutes of uh, Sad al Malik at exactly 1540. Uh, sorry, 1740. So I had C star uh, and at Sadr Malik when uh, my computer died. So never got the International Space Station. There will be a tomorrow, of course. Uh, we will get it. A couple of nights ago, we took uh, Leo triplet. It came out nice. Waiting for Stefan's quintet and then Mercurian's chain. Well, happy Sunday morning to all. Thank you for being up and early with me, except for you guys in Europe and Australia. Thank you for being up late with us. <laughs> Don't know how long is uh, good enough for Markarian's chain. We are at six minutes. I'd like to give it half an hour. My rule of thumb had been uh, take snapshots every 15 minutes and see if there is still improvement. And as long as there is improvement, let it run another 15 minutes. And this is what we have, annotated. I see 3393, NGC 4438, I see 3355, 4402, M86 is at the center of the image, NGC 4425, etc. I like this feature that ASI Air provides with the C-Star. Okay, we'll clean up our act. Unmark it.
I noticed a dramatic improvement in C-Star's performance with the latest app, the latest firmware actually, whereby uh, the stacking overhead has been reduced dramatically. It used to be about five seconds per frame, it's down to about two seconds per frame. We are at uh, 63 frames stacked. And uh, three starlings. We can blame Starlink statistically because there are more Starlinks in orbit than everything else combined. So the probability that none of these is a Starlink is a mere 12% if I remember my probability and statistics courses. Okay, let's have some fun and do, do the math. Google, how many starlings? In orbit. Various reports put it in the 9,000 plus range. And an estimate of about okay, seven thousand satellites from other folks. The satellite trail that went straight through M86 is fading as we stack more frames. Then she started definitely, no doubt in my mind. Uh, depends your uh, tolerance to frustration. C 
Star is a, a minimal frustration device. At 4.40, uh, literally half an hour ago, is when uh, I looked up at the sky, it was clear, and I decided, okay, I'm putting C-Star outside. Uh, this is what we have so far. Good morning, UK. The Sea Star is more than just a fun kit. Uh, I don't know if you have seen my functional comparison between Sea Star and Dwarf, the video that uh, the slideshow really. Uh, it enumerates all the features that were squeezed into. Uh, C start to start with. Uh, I love the autofocus and the automatic taking of darks. Uh, it is the only telescope on the market today that will take darks automatically, will focus automatically. Uh, it has good tracking. The another nice feature is. Uh, you just plop it on a table and tell it to go find, and it will go find it. No need for calibration. Dan, thank you for stumbling across my channel. I rarely ask people to subscribe, so I'm going to ask you to please subscribe. Because I'm at 2249, you'll get me to 2250. Uh, anyway, uh, the one feature of this channel that you will not find anywhere else is my promise to you that any time I turn a telescope on, I'll stream live everything it sees. You guys, if it's not cloudy here and you understand clouds in the UK, I lived in the UK, for, I lived in Manchester for three years. I know clouds. On April 8th, the total solar eclipse, uh, I will be using Sea Star among others. I'll be using a Lunt uh, H Alpha telescope, but I plan to watch the eclipse with Sea Star and then remove the solar filter during totality and image comet uh, 12p Pons Brooks that's going to be near the sun. So uh, we're going to see how flexible uh, sea star is going to be. Hey Dan, where do you live? Where did you find a low light pollution area? And thank you for subscribing. I had used uh, ZWO cameras for many years. And uh, when I saw the release of the Sea Star, uh, I followed the old saying, bet on the jockey, not on the horse. Uh, I placed my order on April 17, uh, less than two days after the announcement, the unveiling of the scope, not knowing anything about it. And it did not disappoint. The ASI Air is built into it. The do heater uh, saved the night many times. Yesterday, the entire outside of the telescope was frozen. There was frost everywhere. 
on the tripod, on the scope, but it was still imaging happily uh, without missing a beat. The guys next to me had their lenses icing up. We got ourselves one more uh, satellite fail. Yeah, I live in Bortle 4, and uh, I'm about a 80 mile, 110, 120-some uh, kilometer drive to a Bortle 2 in the Adirondacks in upstate New York. I've been there twice so far with telescopes to... Uh, with with my uh, electronically assisted telescopes, once with uh, Stellina, once with Dwarf, I'm looking forward to taking C star and seeing what we can get there. Dan, since you just discovered this channel, good morning, Kathy. Uh, you may want to search for a comparison that I did between a Bortle 2 and a Bortle 4 on M51. Uh, I used the dwarf, that's what I happen to have with me, and I imaged the same galaxy. And from Bortle 2 sky and from a Bortle 4 sky, and I put the pictures side by side, and uh, the difference is amazing. Uh, yesterday, I used a six foot tall uh, tripod, uh, not only to keep it above the grass, but to keep it above the five, six, seven-year-old children running around from tripping over it. Right now it is sitting on a table, uh, is on a sturdy table that is sitting on a uh, cold patio, which is about, uh, which is about uh, 12 feet above grass, so we're good there. Uh, Kathy, Mercurian's chain has a lot more galaxies. Sea uh, star's narrow field of view is only showing, uh, actually it's showing a lot more than six. Let me show you how many it's showing. These are all galaxies if you want to count them. So it is counting 13 here, at least it's annotating 13 galaxies. The answer is yes to both, then let me show you. Uh, if I hit... Uh, uh, Stand by. I'm going to switch the view from window capture to screen capture. And I will show you if you hit a double slash C star. 
and you hit enter it opens uh, the files uh, this is C star and right now M86 these are the final stacked images uh, you can get them off your phone or you can retrieve them later from C star I did not turn on uh, save all frames but you can save all frames if you want to get into uh, uh, post processing later on so yes I get the final image on my tablet and I can get the the TIFF of uh, C-Star itself Uh, I am using station mode right now. That's why I can put it uh, very far from me. Okay, step failed. Oh boy. Uh, if you promise not to tell, I built my first telescope as a teenager. Uh, so I can look at the girl on the balcony across the street but for some reason she always appeared upside down so uh, I did not get into astrophotography until about uh, well until COVID really when we were stranded at home with not much to do and my grandson asked for a telescope so he can look at the sky got him a telescope actually got me a telescope passed it down to him and then got another one and passed it down to him and uh, eventually discovered that uh, i can see a lot more of the sky by stacking images than uh, by just visually looking at uh, a handful of targets Uh, Chester, I made a pledge to myself and to you guys who spend time watching my channel that uh, I will not post process anything out of the telescope until I have used it for a full year to see what it can do on its own. Uh, I discovered AstroSurface, which is extremely convenient for post processing. Uh, the learning curve is very uh, uh, low, if you will. And uh, yeah, I do post process. I, I use Deep, uh, Deep Sky Stacker. I use the Ridge Stacks. I use GIMP. But uh, the images that we are getting out of C Star and out of Stellina uh, are uh, superb. Good night, Kathy.
one of the biggest, uh, one big disservice to amateur astronomy has been uh, NASA's introduction of the Hubble palette, as they call it. It's when you take a uh, very, very, very narrow band, uh, S2, O3, and H alpha. These are the three chemical, uh, the three atoms or molecules, I should say, that uh, generate those uh, wavelengths. And then they arbitrarily assign to them uh, red, blue, and green and combine them which gives uh, unnatural colors to everything that's out there. So I'm avoiding uh, colorizing the pictures or messing with the uh, histogram except to the extent of stretching it and uh, lining up uh, the different uh, wavelengths but if you want to get into creating your own colors and assigning them to space by all means if that's what you want to do if that's what you enjoy hey you can make Orion as green as you want to or as blue as you want to when I look at it outside my window, it's red. I can see it with the naked eye, I can see it with binoculars, I can see it with telescope, it's still the same color. What did you put in the painting, uh, Kathy? Saturn? Very nice. We are approaching half an hour on uh, Mercurian's chain and we have time for only one more target before the sun ruins it all. I'm going to uh, give you guys a choice. We can look at the Sombrero Galaxy M104 or we can try to go for M13. M13 is still very low, the great cluster in Hercules. So first one to answer gets uh, your choice.
A bit later in winter, we will spend a lot of time on M104 and M13, but uh, tonight uh, we will not do justice, but just show what C star can do. Then go ahead, which one do you want? A globular, globular cluster or another nice uh, nebula? M104 it is. Okay. Let me show you the process here. We stop capturing. We go to the catalog. It has a very nice sky atlas. And then uh, you pick your object. Sombrero Galaxy. You can look at where it is. It's very well centered, so we can say go to. It will do plate solving. There are enough stars here for it to plate solve. And there we go. There it is. Now we can start capturing. As long as it takes a couple of frames, we will make a decision on whether to zoom in on it or uh, stay out. Good night, Kathy. Thanks for joining us this morning, and please come back. So by double-clicking on it, it will zoom in. Oh, I failed to update the description from last night. Sorry, guys. Uh, let me delete it. Yes, we are all okay. Oopsie, sorry. Yeah, we were at the remote site and uh, to keep my promise that anything that my telescopes observe will be put live on the channel. I had my cell phone, so we had uh, 5G coverage, but it's my laptop which uh, shut down when it sensed uh, very, very cold. Good morning, Jeremy. Uh, no, uh, you cannot see solar flares or prominences with the S50. You need a hydrogen alpha filter. And uh, these are uh, a lot more expensive than the sea star itself. You can see sunspots, but that's about it. If you want to see filaments, uh, faculae, prominences, or flares, uh, you need something like a Coronado or a Lunt uh, solar telescope dedicated with a hydrogen alpha, very, very, very narrow band filter. Take care, Dan, and uh, welcome on board. Nice to meet you. Uh, Jeremy, back to uh, solar imaging for one moment. Uh, just think of the difference between taking a picture and taking an x ray. Uh, an x ray is is able to see beyond the flesh to look at the bones. And uh, that's what you need, the equivalent of an X-ray to look at uh, 
the flares out of the sun or the prominences. Uh, C star is only taking pictures, not x-rays, so you'll only see the sunspots and not the flares. Go sleep, Kathy. It's, it's even earlier in Hawaii than it is in California right now. Jeremy, why are you up so early? Yeah, M104 uh, is a beautiful, beautiful galaxy you have to give it time uh, this is the kind of galaxy where if you give it a good hour of stacking time you will not be disappointed we are only at three minutes and it's already looking nice In the first week of March, if the weather permits it, we will have a new moon and uh, it will be our best chance for a Messier Marathon. I still have not decided if it's going to be Sea Star or Dwarf. Uh, dwarf has one big advantage over Sea Star and that is its speed. It can jump from uh, target to target in seconds 
but if you stay tuned the week of uh, probably March 8, March 9 in that time frame, I'm going to try to go to do an all-nighter and try to capture 105 of the 110 messy objects. Uh, you guys in the UK can appreciate the fact that we live so far north that we cannot see all 110 objects in one night. You need to be further south than the 40th, uh, let's see, than the 45th. 45th? 35th? Well, further south than me. To be able to see all 110. I'm at uh, 43rd. <laughs> Weather forecasts. Yeah, I found the channel that gives me the most reliable weather forecast. It's my window. I look outside. I saw I saw Venus. So I took C star, plopped it on the table, and off we were imaging in a matter of five minutes. So at what latitude do you live? Oh. Yeah, that's what I guessed, around 50-51, yes. Well, with 100 or thereabouts objects and 10 hours or thereabouts of uh, night time, we're talking about... Uh, Five minutes, give or take, per target. I'm trying to write a computer program to uh, operate either Dwarf or uh, C-Star, so we can go through the sequence systematically. And then I can go to sleep. Not. Stelina allows a plan my night. I have not tried feeding the entire Messier catalog in it to see if it can do it. Jeremy, where did you order it from? A local uh, astronomy shop or directly from uh, the company? You have a Gina Astro in California and they have been very good in uh, getting me things quickly. Okay. High point, that's where I bought mine from also. Yeah, I've gotten quite a few things from High Point over the years. I ordered Stellina from them also.
Better I agree with the, the updating software and firmware. Let me show you something quickly. Uh, clicking on this to turn the controls on and off is a request that I made to Zoo saying, can we please turn these off? Find a way to toggle them. And uh, we got it in the following release. The most recent improvement is uh, pipelining the stacking process with the capture process because uh, when you're using the camera, you are not using the processor, so there is no reason not to pipeline them. And they did that, and that increased uh, the number of frames you can capture per hour dramatically. Now I have to talk about uh, one big advantage that Dwarf has over C-Star, and that's just a matter of uh, technology. Uh, C-Star will do plate solving at the target. So if you tell it to go find the target, it'll, it'll go find it, and then that's where it will do the plate solving. Uh, Dwarf will do the plate solving during calibration at the beginning, by taking three snapshots of the sky so it knows what it's looking at and then when you tell it to go to the target it does not do any plate solving it just goes to the target which is why the target is not always in the center fast forward to my story there was a comet in the middle of the trees that i wanted to capture and neither stelina nor c star could find it uh, dwarf had no problem. I calibrated it looking at the open sky, told it to go to the comet, it went to the comet. And then after stacking a few frames, the three branches started disappearing and there was the comet. Uh, Jeremy, I do not have a Vespera. Uh, I bought Stellina before there was a Vespera. I have been running side-by-side -side comparison of uh, Stellina and uh, C-Star. And the only thing I can say at this point is uh, uh, Stellina's 3-inch 85mm aperture allows it to grab uh, twice as much light as C-Star. But uh, when it comes to the image processing inside Stellina and inside C-Star, uh, Stellina is giving very harsh reds, whereas C-Star gives uh, gentle and soft colors. And that's when people will tell you, uh, take the pictures off the telescope and do your own processing, but that's not the idea. When, when you buy a scope, you're buying the hardware and the software.
Yes, it's a good idea to put the solar filter on if you're imaging the sun. Dawn is dawning here. I'm going to keep a close eye on uh, the individual frames as soon as uh, C star stops stacking. It's because it's gotten too bright. That's the first hint that uh, we're approaching the end of our night. Once his star says it didn't find enough stars to stack the image. It has a very nice Sky Atlas, the S50, so you can uh, point and click and go to the target. It doesn't require polar aligning, it does not require uh, the need to see any specific stars, it will just go and find the target. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, signaling the end of this session for us. The sky is uh, clearing up rapidly here. It's almost 6 a.m. Uh, yes, Chester, I agree with you. All right, this is the end of uh, this session. Let me uh, show Jeremy very quickly 
uh, this pi atlas and how one would use it. And uh, if I can find a target that is uh, high enough in the sky, uh, we'll try to go to it knowing very well that we don't have the time to image it. Yeah, Regulus is, uh, should be one to go for. Let's see if we can do it. And uh, we say go find it. Red is what you want to see, and blue is what the telescope is seeing, and it's going to try to uh, center around Regulus. It may or may not. It is doing plate solving right now, but given that we are uh, reasonably bright at this point, it may not... Uh, may not find it. In all likelihood it has it within its uh, field of view. Yeah, there it is. There is regulus, it's trying to center around it. So ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm going to wish you a, a good day from the Rosalind Observatory and uh, join me again whenever I go live.